Hi, you go. My name is Commander Blackstar, Lord Triple Lead at your service. Actually, King Amnor. Let's start again. My name is King Amnor, Commander Blackstar, Lord Triple Lead at your service. And welcome back to another wonderful game of Elite Dangerous. Where the hell are we? Now, I've taken the liberty of actually just loading into the game. And now we're going to have a look where we are and see what's up for grabs. So we'll bookmark the spot. We were, well, a long way away. Oh, wow, we well, were that far away. Yeah, 400 odd light years away. So, we can go. Depends where it wants to take us to. Oh, is that a close neighbor? Another close little, um, we'll have a look at this galaxy, but we want to have a look into here next. Oh, wow, look at that. Hello. We'll have a look at there as well. It's only 115 light years away. But first of all, let's get out of here and let's have a look into the system. Uh, there was a nice little spot we were at before. I've got some nice footage from um, um, for what today is. Let's have a look at outfitting. Got anything new? Um, What was it? Utility mouse or not? Let's just browse. Let's have a look. Anything new? No. I got all quite. Uh, maybe it's the internal ones. I don't know when they're going to come out. The um, the new stuff. So let's just grab that for a second. Browse. Uh, collect the limpets. FSD. Anything there's fire base. They haven't come out. Repair kit surface scanners. Okay, so let's just have a look. See, I'm trying to get my head comfortable, so I'm just comfortable where it turned the surface. We'll have a look. And then we'll have a look at, we'll have a quick look at the system. And then after that, we'll go and have a look at um, the other one there. Okay, we'll watch. We'll just go. Oh, what we got over here? these wake scans one as well if we've got time to I, mean, I was planning to do other stuff today but yeah I mean I was planning to get into the um into that just more recording and that but just like near yeah, too many other things entered into the world of the universe I might do a live thing of world of tanks I don't know yet haven't got TeamSpeak running at the moment Distance. Okay, cool. where we're going to go. Not the other place yet. We can check him. Oh wow. 
Not bad. Oh, that's an Earth by Planet and Water World, I'd say. I love it. Well, we'll just scan everything. These are all landable, which is good. And then we'll go have a look at the other system. I think these will be just like heavy uh, metal ritual heavy, yeah. They'll be metal rituals. Guardian human technology. 
hostilities erupt in Loha system. A long-standing rivalry between two factions in the Loha system has erupted into full-scale conflict. The commencement of hostilities was announced on the Vox Galactica news service by Carleen Troy, a freelance war zone reporter. Relations were already strained when Loha Holdings accused its rivals of hijacking transport ships and murdering their crews. After the new Loha party claimed this was a false flag operation designed to discredit them, diplomacy was rapidly replaced by weapons fire. Since neither side has an extensive fleet, both Loha Holdings and the new Loha party have appealed for support. I've received word that they're offering substantial rewards to independent combat pilots who can aid them in this conflict. The two factions have set out week-long operations to take control of the system, which will begin on the 22nd of November 3304. Olympus Holdings' appeal concludes. A spokesperson for Olympus Holdings has announced that its appeal for commodities has reached a successful conclusion. Hundreds of pilots supported the campaign by delivering goods to Polyakov Orbital and by eliminating agitators in Olympus, thereby ensuring the safety of traders. Pilots who contributed to the initiative can now collect their awards from Polyakov Orbital in the Olympus system. Mars Tribune closes. The Mars Tribune has been closed and its owner arrested in the wake of the spy robot scandal. The announcement was made by Detective Captain Ramesh Thorne who was recently reinstated to, and promoted by, the Federal Security Service. Kingsley Cordova, Editor Lana Seagrid and other employees of the Mars Tribune have been arrested for blackmail and corruption. The news feed has been permanently dissolved, and the Cordova Group conglomerate subjected to a government audit. I would like to thank the anonymous whistleblower who exposed Cordova's scheme. She has now removed the surveillance program from all Achilles Corporation PA912 robots in exchange for immunity from prosecution. Chief Editor Nina Ravenhill wrote in the Federal Times, The Mars Tribune abandoned its professional ethics in its hunt for salacious headlines, thereby undermining the role of honest journalism in our society. We are relieved to see justice done. New appointment to Council of Admirals. Admiral Frederick Yamamoto has been announced as the sixth member of the Alliance Council of Admirals. The position had been vacant for months after the previous appointment. Greery McAllister was discovered to be the coordinator of terrorist group The League of Reparation. The induction ceremony was conducted by Fleet Admiral Haley Sorokin, who said, After many years commanding the Alliance Defense Force in the Zounds system, Admiral Yamamoto has more than earned his place on the Council. His experience will help enhance security for all member systems. Vanya Triscoll, political journalist to the Alliance Tribune, commented, Many expected the role to be filled by an officer from the Lane Fleet, rather than Zounds, so the decision has ruffled some feathers. It has also not gone unnoticed that Admiral Yamamoto is a close personal friend of President Gibson Kincaid. We can review. Here are this week's major stories. A leaked Imperium Internal Security Service report on Nova Imperium has revealed that the group's leader is one Duke Kazo Maud Atticus, a former naval admiral from a long line of decorated veterans. The report reveals that Maud Atticus still has contacts and influence in the Imperial Navy, and that Nova Imperium's ships are mostly run by ex-naval crews. Meanwhile, an Achilles Corporation engineer who helped design the robots at the heart of the spy robot scandal has given evidence to former FSS Inspector Ramesh Thorne. The engineer claims she was blackmailed by Kingsley Cordova, owner of the Mars Tribune, into installing surveillance programs on PA912 administration robots. All the affected robots have now been made safe. In other news, the independent hit 21241 Green Party operation to recover escape pods in the main system has reached a successful conclusion. The captured mercenaries were interrogated by the main defense force, leading to the realization that several of them were junior officers in Sirius Corps private fleet. The engineer Antar, who operates from Phoenix Base in the main system, has claimed that Sirius is trying to obtain his research by force. The Sirius Corporation has refuted any allegations of criminal activity. Popular author Olaf Redcourt, who was recently reported missing, has been found alive and well at a writer's retreat at a remote outpost. The writer is apparently hard at work on his new book, a science fiction novel. Finally, Olympus Holdings, an organization based in the Olympus system, has announced an elaborate social function at Polyakov Orbital, the faction's base of operations. 
In support of this event, Olelvis Holdings has placed an open order for various rare commodities and has pledged to reward pilots who deliver these commodities to Poliak of Orbital in the Olelvis system. And those are the main stories this week. Olav Redcourt found. Popular author Olav Redcourt, who was recently reported missing, has been found alive and well. Margaret of the Dervish Foss Literary Agency told the media, I can reassure Olav's that he's in power and has checked into a writer's retreat at a remote outpost. I can also reassure Bird Spire Publishing that he will soon pay their fees for contractual breach, having sold most of his belongings. Olav is currently hard at work on his new science fiction novel, despite my attempts to convince him to choose a more popular genre. When asked why these facts were not made public sooner, Miss Hist replied, Unfortunately, I didn't know there was concern about Olaf's whereabouts until I returned from holiday. There are no communication facilities at Sky Glow Havens on the Rear Archipelago. Connection to Sirius Corp uncovered. A link has been established between the mercenary group recently intercepted yeah, buddy. the Indian system and the Sirius Corp. Well, terraforming. High middle of terraforming. That's interesting. No, I still have these two to go yet. Yeah. These three to go. Yeah, we'll scan the Shreya and then we'll continue on our way. And we'll go have a look at that little nebula near us. Only 150 light years away. Oops, going too fast. Uh, it's a flyby. Giant fungus. The organization no. has also placed a kill order on all ships on its wanted list to ensure that those contributing commodities to the campaign can do so safely. The campaign begins on the 15th November 3304 and will run for one week. If the final target is met earlier than planned, the campaign will end immediately. Escape pod recovery complete. The independent HIP 29241 Green Party has announced that hmm. its appeal to recover escape pods has been enthusiastic. Oh, well, we'll continue on. We'll scan these last two and then we'll head off into the other unknown for a second and have a look at that. It's probably been scanned, but that's okay. I don't mind that. After this, we'll see what we're going to do. We might go into a bit of world of tanks. Actually, it might do a bit of live world of tanks, even though most of the time I'm going to die. I'll, I've got a couple of reviews I've got to do, so I might do those first. Hmm, don't know yet. We'll see how we go, see if anybody's online and wanting to chat to us. If they are, that's fine. If not, I'm just going to talk to myself a little bit. We noticed I've got the lights removed from this. It just looks terrible having a little straight line of lights. I mean, they could easily really design it much better. That looks better and stuff like that in the hood than how how they had the crit they had the lights. It should be a water world this one. And it should be um a terraformable water world. But we'll have a look here. A spokesperson for the Achilles Corporation said the engineer has provided us with a kill switch that remotely deletes the spike program she designed. This core-aware update has now been transmitted to all PA912 model robots. We can therefore assure our customers that there is no longer any risk of their private information being misused. Report on Nova Imperium leaked. A report compiled at Waterworld. Internal security service on isolation. And, oh, that's right next to it. Sorry, okay. Is that Waterworld there would be... Is it a candidate? Yep. Oh wow, water-based chemistry and carbon 
by all the basic life. Nice. Still would like to land on those, which would be nice. No, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to really go there and land on it and explore the water world and stuff like that. I mean, like even boats or a buggy that can go in the water. I mean, Oh, what's her name? A submarine. I know it. That one there, the high milk content. Well, that's okay. So let's have a look, see where that nebula was. So we've travelled a fair bit from there. Now it looks like we're going don't we, down this time. We're up, then down. We might jump into this next one, I'd say. That'd be our next jump, I think. A police investigation You're looking at the angle and all that, yeah, that looks about right, our next jump. But while we're here, we've got a little tiny one over here, we'll go... We'll go pop into this one. Then... There's a little bit as much there, but we'll go have a look, see. Of course, well, maybe here. No, you're too far away from it. Now we'll just go there and have a look see. Now that he's turned his back on the series, might he have been kidnapped by a rabid fan and forced to write more novels? Yeah, you're kind of a weird looking jump way we're going to do it though. How many jumps have we got to look at? Oh, four jumps. We'll go over there and have a look at it and um, have a look around this, around this uh, nebula, or nebulae, and then we'll go back. I could reduce, take everything off there, but it's going to be about up four jumps. If you look at how far it's going to go on that, I've still got weapons on this thing, but eh. If I need them, I need them. If I don't, I don't. Come across another one of those little hidden places if you take a gem, it'll be awesome. Jump scan this system. You always have a quick sniff at the systems, unless you're in a hurry to, to tee up with somebody or tee up with a group. And it's best to have a look. Well, you, okay, this has all been discovered. There's nothing really worthwhile. That'd be a middle rich planet there. Uh, as soon as that gets expanded, we'll go have a look at that if we can. It's not that far away. Just curious of what that has to offer. You can see this. Oh wow, look at the sun. Don't think you'd want to live here. Definitely going to be a metal rich world. Finally, authorities in the Geras system have confirmed that the conflict between Geras first and Nuduzen State Incorporated has come to an end. Both factions received looks good though. I like this like double sun thing. Ow. Oh, a warning from the Imperator. The isolationist group Nova Imperium has broadcast a message to Imperial citizens via public media. Metal Rich Worlds. The organization's leader, known only as the Imperator said, That'd be nice having two sons maybe above it. Your ruler's weakness. Uh, no, we'll continue on our journey. If we are to survive with our void onslaught, could stand the rest of the stars, but that oh, that looks pretty. Inferior powers and does the thing.
Good day, how you going? Hi. Hey. It didn't take well. We're doing another quick video of where the hell are we? And I'm going to a little nebula that's close by. I need to have a quick sniff at everything that's around us as we're doing it. That's probably the best thing to put in there. Don't be bothered. That'll be another metal rich planet. Currently. That's where we jumped to from there, which had a little base into there. And I'm going over here because there's a nebulite. What were you like to see? Security Chief so we'll continue on. And how are you this fine, wonderful day? That's strange, it's freezing up like locking up. It doesn't normally do that. There must be something else trying to run in the background. Oh wow. That's a pretty planet, but uh, too far, they're nice looking. But nah. We'll continue on our journey, because only one more jump we've got to go. Yep. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Not losing any frames. Control B, control F. Doesn't tell me if there's anybody comes online and how bad the frames drop as well. Okay, let's have a look at this system and have a look at any surrounding systems around it. Let's have a look. Okay, one star here. That's not good. We're in this little nebula. So, let's have a look at what else we got here. That might be worthwhile to have a look at. There's not much, really, is there? The Federal Security Service has tried that one. Investigation of the Mars Tribune regarding personal administration robots fitted with hidden surveillance programs. Although interviews with the first of all, so it was scanned it good. Um, let's have a look. Not much really to look at it here, is there? The Tribune's owner, billionaire Kingsley Cordova, stated. I'm pleased that our innocence has been accepted, and I'm confident that um, just thinking where we want to go and we'll look level. Well. Uh, oh, look at this one. Last week, Cordova suggested the spiral to share the their secrets they've gathered, and suddenly the FSS is ordered to leave the Mars Tribune alone. Does anyone really think this is Yeah, I will just have a quick look at that one. If there's any worthwhile we'll hang around. If not, let's get away from the sun to see if the colours how well the colours affect it. Look around. 
If not, we'll go back to the other place and just hang around and go back there and wait till we do the next jump. So you always want to just drift away from the main sun if you're in a nebula or nebulae and just have a look at what the colours are like, stuff like that. Um, sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't look like there's going to be anything here today. So. So the brightness of the star will basically block the, the lot of look. And you start to appear now and you see the different colours, see? Slightly red, it's not that strong this one, but... Can't do much about that. I was seeing this. How did this change to take? See, this is freezing. Shouldn't be freezing. Thirty-three. Oh, hello. That looks pretty. It's moving fast too. That doesn't seem to be moving at all. That's moving fast. We might have a look at that. Since we're here. And the orange. Yeah, have a quick look at that. Okay. Because we've got that one now, we will have a quick look at but I'm just curious. That's not that far away. Let's have a quick look at these two are. Um, high metal, yep, what's up? That'd be another high metal one. And the gravity's only weak, 1.15. Which is kind of annoying. That has a bit of higher gravity, but that one's moving pretty fast. Rotation. Uh, radius. Yeah, I don't have very much on there. So let's have a look if there's anything else worthwhile jumping into here. We'll look at one more place. See if we'll find one that's actually deeper into this stuff. No, you're out of it. Not much, of, not very big this one, is it? <laughs> um, let's take a look, see if there's anything worth. I think that star. Uh, oh, yeah, I haven't been this, so let's go over there. Senator Caspian Leopold has announced that his appeal for aid and then the of the we'll just have a quick look at this one and if nothing's there then we're just gonna the nothing really worthwhile there, we'll just keep going. Well you do get some nice colours, uh some still sort of close. Now some look really good, some just look yeah, average. When you jump, always put it back to neutral if you've got a like, um, thing. So the whole idea is that way there you're not going to get forward straight into the sun. If you walk up, I'll go to the toilet, I'll go and make a cup of coffee, get something to eat. You know it's in neutral. Have a quick style. This is really not good. It shouldn't be freezing like this. 14 planets is a... Uh, 
Not really worth it. It's, wait, is it a black hole? Uh, no. Nothing worth it. So, let's go back to there. We've had a look at this place. There's nothing really in here, this little nebula. It's just there. Nothing I'm really worried about to look at. There is another one, I believe. So we've got another nebula over here. Which we're gonna, I think we're going to jump to that one there. There's the one over here, but I think that's a bit too far to go. I'm just curious how far it is. Oh, oh God, give me a star. Any star? Nice. Is there any star around here? Interesting. That's why I think we're going to jump to next anyway, so I'm not worried about that. No. I'm surprised we can... Okay, the way we're here. Ah. Okay, let's go. We've got four jumps again. I've pretty much got it fully armed. I still haven't taken anything off it from last time I had it. No point. I just have to hang on to it, and if we have to jump far, then it's fine. So that's good. That's all finished. Jump back to there and land. There's not much really to see around this area at the moment. Wait till I get to the next nebula. That might be a good one to see, but other than that, eh. We'll jump back and we'll call it a night for this one. It does look pretty. Still like the special effects. I can't wait for the newer stuff to come out. That'd be awesome. But I really wish I could actually have another ship here. It would be much better. But I eh, can't get that lucky come sometimes. 12 places. And let's have a look. Sniff, quick sniff. Yeah, nothing really to look at. Don't worry about that, then we'll continue on our way. I'm going to try to get into, um, what's the name, see if I can actually get a game to that, but, eh. Doesn't, there's not many people online at the moment anyway. Two people. I think he says that engaged too fast. Not all of them get it right. I think I need to slow down a little bit because it goes engage. It's like, no, it should be engaged. Nice. If you listen to the voice, and it's really, it's a nice voice, but it's too fast, I think, to have done for that one. Okay, we're seven places here. Let's have a quick sniff at. Oh, hello, hello. I am. That would be a water world. Those would be a water world. Maybe even a terraformable world. That looks like it has an atmosphere. That one does too. I think I'll have a sniff at these ones before we continue on. It's not, it's not that many. It's got its own little moon for that one. I think it contains a moon, really. It's the same orbit. Okay, so let's go have a sniff. I've had the drones I can spot. Pop the drones at 
I don't know if the scanner is still going to be. If the scanner still be effective, then yeah. Be able to scan the system, get get a rough idea like that, and then you pop the drones out to have a look at them. That could be. That be might be interesting. Um, or do you have to fly to the planet, and then drop the drones out? I don't know how they're going to do that. Yet. I don't have access to the beta. Um, I didn't buy a lifetime pass. Well, I could afford to at the time. I would have bought a lifetime pass. Um, because this is probably one of the best games I've ever played, and I've had it since the eighties, you know, the eighties and stuff like that. It's a long time, I know, but it's, I've been waiting for a game like this to come out for a long time. But it's lost its, I don't know, it's sort of like died off a little bit. I think, I don't know what it is. It's, a, um, it's just something about it, just not quite right. I'm not overly fond about where the developers are taking the Thargoids and how they're using the Thargoids and you'll see the museum in the background simulator as well it doesn't really rock my boat so to speak I'm quite happy just to go and do my own thing not worry about the Thargoids and if the Thargoids start becoming a nuisance to normal uh, player fractions and stuff like that they're gonna get annoyed with it and it's bad enough to grind as it is. Um, but when you're going to have to then now deal with Thargoids invading your system and you're going to fight them? I mean, I don't have any weapons for fighting Thargoids. Um, and I don't want to spend hours and hours or weeks, actually literally weeks, probably about a month or two, just getting a ship ready to fight Thargoids. So I can battle them in a, in a background simulator. Some people might like that. They might get the they might get the rocks off and fighting them, and they like to do that type of thing. But I'm quite happy just doing me doing my own thing. Just want to scan this system and a continue job. I've got two more jumps to go, so I'm not worried about it. I know other people scan the system, but it doesn't bother me if somebody else scanned it. That's good for them. I'd rather see more development on worlds, more new, a newer buggy, even a submersible a boat would be nice. Um, landing on water worlds, landing on other worlds that have life on. I'd rather see that having bases on planets, going down the pathway, maybe even building bases on planets. Maybe not as in like other games where you have to build it, but they could have go off the models they got here. And you have to purchase the things or do get do missions to get the things and every time you complete a certain amount of missions off you get to um, look at other things um, you get to have a new part of your base there and you can get to walk around in your base and then potentially possible missions in the base as well like around the base inside the base like the role-playing game does that would be interesting because you could go you could find a, a planet that no one else has discovered so you go oh well this has got everything i need on it it's got rich resources i need to get first of all get the get material people here robots here to build the base um do missions to build the base um once the base is set up and how you want it set up what you want in there trade wise and stuff like that because you're going to have that option into, into the game so how do you go about uh, what do you need to do is like for community stuff um, what, are you, what are you trying to do there once you work out what the planet has to offer then you will work out how to build the base do non-atmospheric worlds to start with landable planets to start with and then go from that step to 
creating building your own base like having um, elite have their own bases on what's it called on um, habitable worlds or atmospheric worlds and also uh, water worlds and stuff like that that we can then land on and then do the next step would be to build those build those bases from there um, to build ourselves bases on those habitable worlds and stuff like that that would be the next step um, but we could do that and this is the path where I'd like to see the game go down not let's all basically beat up thyroids that annoys me um, all the thyroids come into fear of human civilization why can't we trade with them why can't we set up friend uh, I don't know I just like to do things differently instead of the way they want to do it or everybody else wants to do things okay that's a high middle world which I thought it would be another high middle world which I thought it would be one well, I thought it might have an atmosphere but yeah well <coughs> this one here's a this, now this is a body for terraforming it's a water world which active base now this is what I'd like to see in my build land on even be able to explore outdoor world of human breathable atmosphere oh wow this far from that is nice. I thought that might have been a world of world, but that, that definitely is a world of world. But oh, and that one there is rocky, rocky world with a little on those things. So you got to look at the bigger picture, All right? And the bigger picture is quite simple. I'd like to see more content in the game. I'd like to be able to go. Oh, that planet there, that Earthlight one. We should be able to build a civilization on now. Like first of all, you go, okay, you want to build a space station. Um, either build a base on the, on the base on the ground first, or you build it such a way you can build a space station. Um, you want to be able to build a big, a big Coriolis one. You want to build a small one to start with. Get the materials you need to do that. Then get the materials you need to land on the planet. The non-atmospheric ones the first one. This would be the easy steps. Have the pre bases already pre designed, built uh, for Pacific purposes. Like they can easily go, Oh, there's a mining base, we need this, 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 there. This is something else base, uh, we need this, this, there, this spy base, we need this, 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 there, so forth. And rinse and repeat basically pre made kits. Um, and what you can walk around and explore, you can walk around the outside of it, inside your landing ship instead of. Um, you have it so you can land your ship on the outside and walk around and it depends on how you build it, it depends on what you put into it, it depends on how you enter the base. Um, like if you build it so you've got landing pads and all that, that's got a lot more materials. If you build a basic one, yeah it's a high metal content world which is going to have nothing else in there. So let's continue on our journey. And you build in such a way as okay you're you have to actually build your base like other bases where they've got the bases and you had to land outside the base and you have to pretty much use a buggy to go around imagine you be able to getting out and walking around and then that's not why you have to either use the buggy or you have to use the oh, SRV or people get uh, people get triggered if I call it buggy um the SRV um and if you use that or in that to get into your base and you design your base for a specific purpose see this is well that one didn't freeze the time good um and you go ah okay i've got my base for a specific purpose and you can then walk around and do all that and that's going to cost x amount of materials x amount of resources money wise as well let's have a quick sniff at this one there's quite a lot there but mostly garbage i'd say that there yeah, not nah, mostly garbage but um, this is how I would do it. Um, that's my personal opinion. But so you've got your space station now. First of all, you get your space station. You had that little space station or something like that. Especially if you're going to be a mining planet, that it's only going to be able to handle. You want to be able to handle big ships as well, not just small ships. So you've got to have different size base stations too. You know, that's a harder one to do because. A lot of a lot of splash you need bigger ships like using the anaconda or the python or something like that to to get out there and so forth. Um, but 
All depends on, of course, the, le the level of what you want to try to achieve. You start off small, then you work yourself bigger, and so eventually you can you build these. All these bases will have your name on it. Um, the genetic, genetic names we can create that have a base for it. So you can have okay, first discovered by blah blah blah. The whole the whole space uh, the whole say system can be discovered by one person. And then of course all the space stations and that could have their name on it. Now they don't own the space station. Oh, they do, but they don't own the space station, right? They own it in such a way as where they make a profit off selling a uh, percentage off actually after they built a percentage of what that space station does, or what that land land station does. Like if it's a mining one, um, they make X amount of money off the mining or trading or whatever. That's there, right? Because you can see yourself find a nice little system even inside the bubble. You go, wow, there's nothing here, but it's got something that's going to link these two places together on a better jump. But also, I can trade this to this person, this to this person, and make a ton of money on the process because it's got the resources and massive resources are there. So then you set up your. Um, then you go, okay. Then you first of all scan it, okay. Get then start going down a mission based system it would be the easiest way to do that because that way that you know exactly what you have to do to build that thing right and then you build it now you've spent you could probably spend credits on it but buying it would be just an, a really waste um, but once you've got the, you or your group build it like if you you can do a group thing or you can do an individual thing it's up to you all you can do is a group thing but uh, you, as an individual you're doing so well the rules of Jonah so now if you're doing it say for your group the only difference i would have put into there would be you it would become under the rules of jonah influence type thing so that to me then we come into play into that um then then of course that affects the given rules of rules of jonah and all profits then go to rules of jonah which is kind of you know, you you just get the accreditation of being being the owner of that thing um, but then of course the background simulations and stuff like that you have to control that would be a lot harder to probably implement into the game so I would probably just make it so individuals create the system or create the entity they pretty much try to get it going down the path where they want like a piracy or something else like that depends on their gameplay what they want to try to achieve um, and then they make profits from whatever happens what missions happen around there and if you put a mission based system then you know you've got to do say um, hundred missions to have this one complete thing completely set up right and, and you have to bring um, all the you have to bring materials there same as like community goals but don't have a time limit on because that way their players can enjoy it and maybe spend a year or two building maybe one big huge core big big space station um, well, actually it'll probably take more than a year to build but but they could do it themselves and they could have fun just doing those things but then of course that then once they've built it it comes part of the background somewhere the, the governments get voted by the people or how it's run it gets controlled by influences around it um it can be controlled by the individual people individual npcs that are in that area um, so you that then takes over the player says well I've built this I can explore around it I can walk around it I can do missions the sub missions they can do in it um, and then they can go okay well I can still I'll make a little bit of profit um, off what it's doing it's like if it's got commodities there it sells that if it's got industrial there or high tech or whatever or just um, and you call it, it makes profit off though the player individually makes profit from that um, they don't control the station per se they just make um, a profit and they can always and anybody can go there anybody can make anybody can influence the background similar distance and so forth like that to make it into a um, into a different thing so that's just an idea um, you start off with say I would rather probably start off with land-based systems. Now that's going to take off in about six days. Still looks beautiful. Now 
Ah well, well just. Let it take over. But that's how I would want to do it. I'd want to set it up in such a way as where the players once they've built it at the hands out of their hands. If they even half build it and they walk away from it, it stays half built. Another player could take up the building process unless it's done only on the that, that player's name. So, so you can have a locked system, you have a lock to that player until the player gets it done or locked to that group or locked to several different players. But once you build it, I love like look at this space station, right? Look look at this ship, sorry, the space station. Look at this ship. I would love to walk around this ship. Honestly, I would love to be able to get out of the get out of this cockpit and walk around it, see what's around there. Have put some bars in here, put stuff that could be useful for this. You could even create sub missions in here, where oh, there might be a terrorist attack uh, or something else. New, or there might be a plot to destroy this or stop it going forward again or get Thargoids involved. There are so many. Hello. Don't be the NPC. But anyway, that's my rambling on for today. <clears throat> I'll put this to bed for another six days and see where we jump to. I've got a feeling I'm, I know where I want to, where we're going to jump to. Um, have a quick look. I imagine it's gotten warm. I got cold enough first. I've got a feeling my next, our next jump point will be here. Could be there, but uh, I'd say here, because you look at the line where it's gone to, it's jumped from there to there. Um, that wasn't that far of a jump range to it. Now it's going back to the, the usual one, so it's going to jump into here or close to here, I would say. Um, and then we'll go from there. But we're looking at it, we're going to keep going where it's going to go. We'll follow it along and see how it all goes out and how it all pans out. I've got a fair bit of footage I can use. Ah, oh, well, my name is King Admiral Commander Black Star Lord Triple Lead at your service signing off. Thank you again for watching my videos and door comments are welcome. You all have a great day now.